Hallelujah. of the life, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant, Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great triumph, of famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voices the desert declare you the word of the Lord. Behold, he come, crying on the cloud, shining like the sun, and the trumpet soar. Lift your voice and hear you what you believe. Out of Zion, heal salvation. Behold, he come. Behold, he comes, shining on the cloud. Shining like the sun. And the trumpet. And the trumpet. Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion Hill salvation. Behold. Behold. He comes. Riding on the cloud. Shining like the sun. And the trumpet. And the trumpet. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Riding on the cloud, riding like the sun, and the trumpet, lift your heart, it's the year of the there's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Ain't nobody like you. Nobody like him. Nobody. There's no God like him. There's no God like him. If there's nobody like him, I said, I know there's no God like him. There's no God like him. Oh, no.
there's no God like No God. Come on, is that your testimony? Has our God good to you? There's no God like There's no God like There's no God like There's no God like We bless your name, Jesus. There's nobody like Oh. Come on, can you lift your hands if you know there's nobody like him? We bless you, Jesus. There's nobody like him. Come on, there's nobody like him. Hallelujah. How many of you can testify that he's been better than good? Oh, yes. There's no God like our God. There's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Amen. While we're on our knees, amen. I think maybe we can not count. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like Put you make so many You make so many ways. You make so many times. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You heal my body. You made me one more time. And more grateful, Lord. Oh, so many doors. So many ways, so many times, God, you've been better than good to me, so many doors, you've made so, so many times you healed us, you've been better than good to me, so many doors, so many doors you brought Thank you, God, for being better than good. When he didn't have to do it. <laughs> when he could have passed over. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for allowing us to come to his presence this morning. And as we transition into our worship service, we're asking that you join us this morning in lifting up this hymn that reminds us in this Lenten season that we belong to the Lord. It says, I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Can we go back up to the end? Oh, my love 
have our prayer and our scripture. Heavenly Father, creator and maker, architect of the universe, we come this morning, God. Some come with down and out spirits. Some have had long weeks of drain of energy. We come this morning, God, petitioning to you because we know that you have all power. And there are none like you, God, so we pause for a moment just to invoke your Holy Spirit, just to invite you to ask your God that you will stop by 6045 Riverdale Road Mount Zion AME Church, Lord. And you don't have to stay long, but God, we know that if you've stopped for a little while and pay attention to us, you'll see our needs. And Lord, we are all different because you created us a different DNA, and we all have different needs. But Lord, this morning we reach our hands and we stretch our hands to thee for no other help that we know than knowing that the power lies in your hand. So, God, we ask you that you come on and help us to praise and worship you this morning, God, to, to have church in your name this morning, God. And then, God, we ask you to protect those that are coming this way. We ask you to put angels around them, God, and keep them with safe and traveling mercies. 
We can't thank you enough, God, for what all you've already done because you've been so good. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, God, but you stopped by our bedside this morning, early this morning, God, and somebody heard the angels sing. Give us one more day. So, God, we want to ask you that you would also forgive us of our dear sins and forgive those who have sinned against us, Lord. And God, we know we've been wrong sometimes, but we know that you have watched over and you have forgiven us. And so, God, walk with us today. Bless the preacher today, God, that's going to come and stand in the shoes of John. That's going to break the word of life this morning, God. And we pray, God, that somebody be changed and they say, I yield and I surrender. I can't live this life any longer. So, God, when you come, and when you come, God, have your own way. Strip us of ourselves, Lord, that we can see you, that we can feel you, we can hear you in the midst of this worship service, God. And when we leave this place, God, we won't be the same. We'll be renewed to go and do your work and do your will, Lord. And God, I can't thank you enough for waking me up this morning. Long week, spirit drained in certain areas. God, but you saw fit that you woke us up this morning. And we just want to give your name praise it because you've done what you've done, Lord. And we know that you didn't have to send your son to die upon the cross for our sins and our wrongs, Lord. That we might have the right to the tree of life. So, God, we pause to glorify your name. We pause, God, to give you thanks. We pause, God, to say thank you for you being God all by yourself. And, God, there's so many things that I could say. But, God, we know that you know all about it. Those that are about to be in a World War III, we want to call it. Will you go, God? Will you watch over them, Lord? Will you calm the hearts of men and women that are involved, Lord? Some might not come back, but God, we ask you that you would put it in your hands. And I believe, God, if you put it in your hands, it's going to be all right. So, God, just have your way today in this place, in our lives, most of all, God. Have your way. In Christ's name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from Romans, the 10th chapter. We'll be looking at verses 8 and 13. The word of God is recorded on this wise. But what does it say? The word is near you and your lips and in your heart because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Jesus that God raised him from the dead you will be saved for one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confess with the mouth and so is saved the scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame for there is no distinction between Jews and Greeks. the same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of Jesus of Lord shall be saved yes Lord the word of God that the Lord really he still reigns today the Bible tells us that he's the same yesterday today and forever and so God still reigns today this pandemic even in the midst of all this social distraction this morning because guess what it's still just a distraction the Bible tells us that the enemy comes to steal to kill to destroy but Jesus personally said but I came so that you can have life and that you can have life more money and so get He reigns, he reigns forever. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns forever. And his name is the Jesus, the Lord of everything.
name is Jesus, ruler of everything.
happens when we let God rule everything in our life. Amen. I just want to lift up to you this morning. First of all, it's the first Sunday in the month of March. Amen. Amen. We made it through two months of 2022, and we praise God for keeping us because there's so many that did not make it, even from yesterday to today. And so we start off celebrating our birthdays. Amen. We got some March birthdays. We got a few that have already passed, but we still going to celebrate them on today. So we starting off on the first day of March. Amen. We have Sister Ann Thornton. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And on March the 5th, we have Sister India Stanley and Sister Grace Ward. Amen. And then on March the 19th, we have Kimberly Hayes, who is the daughter of Sister Ann and Homer Thornton and the uh, sister of Heather Thornton. Amen. Heather always makes sure she get her birthdays in. Amen. <laughs> I appreciate it. Amen. And then on March the 25th, we have Sister Stephanie Atkins. Amen. And then we close it out on the last day of the month, March 31st, with Tyler Thornton Jones. Amen. And I'm not mistaken, that's the granddaughter of, oh, wait a minute, let me finish, let me finish. Sister Ann and Brother Homer Thornton and the daughter of Sister Heather Thornton, Tyler Thornton Jones. And then who else we got? Uh, any other birthdays? Come on. Mackenzie? Amen. When is your birthday, Mackenzie? March the 15th. All right, Mackenzie. That's awesome. Awesome. So we are so excited for all of our March birthdays. I did not get any March anniversaries. Are there any anniversaries in March? Okay. Love wasn't in the air, at least in this place in March. Amen. <laughs> Let's sing happy birthday to our birthday celebrants. Many more. We pray God's blessing on you for many more. I just want to lift up a few of the announcements that have been coming across our screen today. They're all there for you to see. The first one I want to remind you is that we are in the season of Lent uh, as we move toward Resurrection Sunday. This is a season of reconciliation, revival, and renewal. And so in keeping with that, we will have our uh, word on Wednesday. Bible study. Uh, we will be focusing on the topic of reconciliation, the reality of reconciliation. It sounds, it's a long word, and uh, but it's not complicated, but sometimes we make it harder than it has to be. So join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for our Lent Bible study, the reality of reconciliation. And then we also have upcoming uh, some topics that we have been talking about. Our financial empowerment workshops will be starting this month, both in person and virtual. We will be starting on March 16th. You will be receiving additional information about this. And the, the overall theme for the workshops is faith, family, and finances, new money habits. And amen, amen. So one of the things I came to realize is that sometimes, you know, we're always talking about give, give. And some of the challenges is because our finances are so messed up. We're not really able or feel we're not really able to do what the word calls us to do. 
And so we will be covering some topics that will talk about understanding the rules of money, how to snowball your debt, building wealth in our community, million dollar baby plans. Some of us don't need that anymore, but maybe we got grandkids we want to do that for. Tax-free retirement and how to become your own family bank and leave a legacy. So I encourage you, we will have a series of them because it's important. And if we don't have any other time to remind us of that as we look around and how the economy has shifted so drastically uh, in this time, I found a receipt for something that I bought at the grocery store the other day, just well, not quite a year ago. And I paid $3.49 a pound for it. And now it's about three times that amount. And so uh, in this season, I encourage you to take advantage of these seminars. We're still working in the community, trying to remind people that even in this season, many of us have already done the process of getting vaccinated, but we still have people who have not. And so on uh, Saturday, March the 19th, I think that date might be wrong. Is that the right date? Okay. All right. Uh, at 9 a.m. here at Mount Zion, we will have a vaccination. Uh, you'll be able to get tested. You can get, if you hadn't gotten your booster shot, all of those things will be available. So we encourage you to share this information uh, with uh, members of your family. And we pray that it will bless you. So maybe our date before, because our financial workshops start on the same date as the community vaccination. So that will be March 19th. I saw the 16th somewhere. So we praise the Lord for that. So we just ask that you continue to share with our congregation, with your family members and friends who may have disconnected during this season, that we are back. This is our reunion month. This was our reunion Sunday for us to reunite, revive, and renew our relationship with God. And so we invite you to be here every Sunday at 11 a.m. I know some of us may have had to shift today because we've been used to 1130. Amen. And then remember next Sunday, the time goes up. So uh, we're, uh, we're going to have to shift again. But just share the information. We are so glad to have you in this place today. If you have not picked up your welcome back uh, gift bag that is sitting out, the purple bags, please make sure you get one before you leave today, welcoming you back here to Mount Zion. I want to thank Sister Latha Stokes for putting them together, doing a marvelous job. Amen. And, and, and guess what? Pastor didn't ask. It was her idea, and I was just blessed by it. And that's what we, you know, God has something for all of us to do. And when God puts something on your heart, just do it. You're doing it for the Lord, and he will make a way and provide. Yes, Sister Stowe? Amen. That's right. Some Most of the items you have in there is from the food ministry. So praise the Lord. And they helped and package them up and everything. But the idea was yours. Amen. And we praise God for putting that in your spirit. Amen. And uh, so there's plenty of work to do. There's I always say there's plenty of good room. If you see something you think need to be done, then come up with the idea. And bring it to me and I'll, nine times out of 10, I'm going to say yes. Because there, it says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Now, this next announcement I am really excited about. Uh, as many of you know, I am, y'all pray for your pastor. <sighs> I'm trying hard to march in May. You know, I've been working on my doctorate at Emory. And last year, with everything that was going on with COVID and all of the challenges, I did step back and say, you know what? I'm just not ready. It's just too much. Uh, but I'm moving forward. So I experience is a project that we have to come. Everybody in your doctoral 
uh, project, you have to come up with a doctoral project that goes with your paper and then you have to present it and defend it. And, uh, and so mine is a concept called I experience. And it's how you can experience God outside of just in the four walls. And that there's so much more that we can do in our and how we engage God. And we experience it here, but we can experience it beyond this place. And if nothing else, the last two years has taught us that, that we can still experience God, not just by gathering in the sanctuary, but that God is waiting for us on the street corner. He's waiting for us in the store parking lot. He's waiting for us out here in the parking lot. God is waiting for us in all places. But one of the things we're going to do here, starting today, as soon as uh, the choir, uh, the praise team gets finished singing their song, I don't I'm stop calling them the choir because the choir is working on coming back. Amen. We're going to have our choir back. I forgot what Sunday they told me, but they working on it. They were here yesterday and we praise God that they're coming. But the praise team, amen, is here today. And we thank God for them because you know what? I have to just give them praise. They have been standing in the gap during all this time. We came back into the sanctuary to broadcast virtually in August of 2020. And they have been faithful. We, and when we when we had few, then, then God sent more. And when we were short, God sent us a supply. And so all through that, they have been here each Sunday uh, making sure that uh, we were able to carry out our worship service. And I tell them over and over again how thankful I am for that and that I do not take it lightly. Our, our, our singers and our musicians who have shown up and we praise God for that. But today we're going to start experiencing it in what we call Gen Now. You know, we always talk about the next generation. These are our next generation. Our young people are our generation now. And we have to start pouring into them now. Mm -hmm. We can't wait until they're 18 and 20 and then start trying to show them the way. By then, you know, then we got a battle on our hands. And so starting on, on Sundays, uh, we will be having uh, our young people to go downstairs and have a moment of experiencing God on their own territory, on their own level, and talking to them. And the Reverend DeMarcus Prayer is going to lead that. Amen. And he's going to be recruiting some other people to help him. You know, he wants to be able to give them some crafts, some snacks, some different little things. And so we praise God that he is willing to do this. So this is youth experiencing God now and living their faith now. Uh, because I tell you, some of the stuff that I hear from elementary school students, uh, middle school students, we got work to do. We got work to do. And we cannot wait until later. We got to do it now. So I'm asking all of our young people who uh, are present today, when the praise team gets finished singing our uh, Reverend Prayer, and anyone that wants to assist him, but don't all y'all go, okay? <laughs> uh, they will go downstairs for a moment of sharing and reflection uh, as they begin to begin this process. And we're just so thankful that we can begin this ministry on today. Amen? Amen. So we're ready for the word. I think I have covered uh, everything. Uh, I don't see anything else popping up. So I think I think we're good to go. If not, just look and you'll see it as it comes across the screen. And I want to thank um, Miss Cassie for uh, being available. <laughs> Making sure every Sunday that we had our virtual stream going and still doing it. We've, uh, we're still virtual. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. And so we just praise God for how God has been able to allow us to uh, adjust in this season. Uh, of course, we still have all of our electronic giving options. We encourage you the ministry that we have here at uh, uh, St. Mark. Lord, I'm talking about my home church. Lord, they must be over there talking about me. Uh, that we have here at Mount Zion. Uh, we have our food ministry that is out every first and third Saturday. And then they're here every Thursday. Praise God for that ministry and for each and every one of the individuals that work in it. Uh, so sow a 
seed. It's good ground and it is going to work. We're working in the community. Uh, we have not been idle in this season. We have been active moving forward. Our school is still downstairs uh, each and every day. So we praise God. God said, be faithful over the few things. Sometimes we complain about when things are few. But God said, if you be faithful, celebrate the few, then he will give you more than you need. He will give you dominion over many. And so our Cash App, our Zale, our Gillify, for those who are joining us virtually, and we welcome you. It is appearing across your screen. Uh, for those in the sanctuary, it is on the monitors, and we encourage you to give God has given unto you. Uh, when you prepare to leave, the, uh, if you're giving in person, uh, the baskets will be in the center aisle as you uh, proceed to leave, and we ask that you leave out of our side aisles and then out the door. We thank you so much for joining us today, and this uh, praise team is going to come and prepare for the word.
Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Lord our God. Isn't he wonderful? Lord, we come right now to just say thank you, God. We lift you up right now, God. For you are so wonderful. And we thank God for you. We thank God for your salvation. We thank God for your grace. And we thank God for your mercy. God, now we prepare to receive your word, God. I ask that you remove the pressure, God, that you step forward. God, that it not be about me, God, but it be about you. God, that they hear you, even as they see me. So, God, now we come acknowledging your presence, invoking your Holy Spirit, asking that you move and abide in this place. Touch the hearts of your people who have gathered in the sanctuary, in the virtual spaces. Touch them right now, God. They will experience you in a new and mighty way. And now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. For you are indeed my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God say, Amen. would turn with me in the Old Testament to the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses 1. And the scripture reads thusly, and before I begin the scripture reading, I'm going to give our young people time to move down. Amen. The scripture reads thusly, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath 
to enter into you and you shall live. I will put snewings on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the snewings and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And indeed, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And then you shall know that I am the Lord whom I have opened your graves. O oh, my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. And so for today, I want to lift up the subject from this text, Can We Live Again? In this text today, we find Ezekiel viewing the landscape around him, one that he's not familiar with, one he did not even possibly realize existed or would ever exist. Bones of a pandemic, bones of COVID-19, bones of isolation, bones of separation, bones of fear, bones of loss, God brought him all of the sight so he could get a full view of the despair, delusion, and damage that had occurred. He wanted Ezekiel to see that while he had been safely secure in his home, sheltering in place, isolated from others, that there had been many that had suffered Many that had lost, many that had lost lives, had lost jobs, had lost finances, lost relationships. And I'm sure Ezekiel was shocked by the number of bodies he observed. God took him all around so that he could get a full view of the situation. And he says he saw very many in the valley. Ezekiel came face to face with the stark reality of how severe and dry things had become. Ezekiel was faced with both the current situation and the dilemma as to whether the condition would improve, whether it would recover from what it had been through and what it had suffered. Can we see it? Can you see it? As we pass to and fro in this valley of dry bones, do we see how dead it has become? Do we see how oppressive the current situation is? While like Ezekiel realizing that God is providing us with a future vision of encouragement. I stopped by today to let you know that even though the situation is very dry. Filled with bones of spiritual deadness. So dry from the winds of distracted living, unforgiveness, thought selfishness, no concern for each other, having idolatry that puts living our best life ahead of living our life for Christ. That it seems all hope was gone. Bones that have been disconnected from each other, 
cut off from the nourishment of relationships, cut off from the sharing of fellowship and connection with loved ones. These bones were not only separated physically, but many times they were separated spiritually from the body of Christ. Until I believe some people decided, I don't have any need of each other. But 1 Corinthians 12 reminds us that the body is one and has many members. That the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you nor the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Though our parts are many, we are one body. For in Christ, we are all baptized into one spirit. So disunity became the hallmark of the day. The standard of our lives, this disconnect separated us physically from each other. And as time passed by and the bones began to accumulate and began to dry, we even entered into a spiritual separation. No worship on Sunday. No worship on Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Even as the bones dried. And the powers of the world tried to bring them back together again physically. But it seemed things just wasn't working. It seems what should have been a great reunion was filled with even more despair. War and rumors of war. Food prices out of control. Financial stress. Gas prices out of control violence in our streets and homes, murder everywhere, from the convenience store to the gas station to the highways, suicide in seemingly unlikely, unexpected places, death of great ancestors who provided leadership to our people, children seemingly every week dying from misplaced or mishandled guns. Yes, the bones in the valley are dry and they're trying to come together. But the question for these bones, will we come out of the valley of despair? Will we come out of the valley of disease? Will we come out of the valley of death? The real question is, will we live again? So here we are with Ezekiel in this valley of dry bones. In this wasteland of dire situations with bodies all around us, asking, can we live again? Wondering about the can these bones live again? The scripture today gives us the answer. In humility and humbleness, we must acknowledge, oh Lord, oh God, only you know. Acknowledging that God our status, our jobs, our income, we've all learned that it gave us no control over the valley. Uh, it, it, we were not able to answer the question by ourselves. We couldn't solve the situation, but we know God alone has the power because he's omnipotent. God because he's omniscient. God alone can cover the entire valley and the entire world because he's omnipresent in the spirit. Amen. Only you, God. Yes, we can because of you, God. Even when it seems impossible, we know God specializes in doing just the impossible. We can't do it. We can't revive ourselves no matter how hard we try. This is a matter for the spiritual realm. We have to learn to trust God and realize that alone we can't do all things. Uh, see, we relied too long on ourselves. We removed God from our thought process. Uh, uh, we believe that we have so much control over our finances. We have so much control over our freedom to, to come when we want. 
we got freedom to handle our own business and to be in charge of our own destiny. But I stopped by to let you know that if nothing else we have learned in these two years is that it is not with our power. It's not with our physical capabilities. It's not with our mental intellect, but it's only through Christ that we can do all things. So just like Ezekiel, we've been in a position not of our own choosing. See, sometimes God will put us in positions and situations that leave us with no options but to seek his face. And if we truly have knowledge of God, we should be comforted when hopelessness and dire situations occur instead of being fearful and frightful and, 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 not, and, and, and in despair because we know that God alone knows all about it. If it can be done and it is to be done, then we know God can do it. God ordains and plans. God has a purpose for this valley experience that we have been going through. I don't know what the ultimate plan is, but it's not for me to know. And it's not for you to know. Uh, I don't know what the ultimate plan for these bones are, but while we may be wondering, will it ever be the way it used to be? Uh, how will we move forward? I challenge you today to trust God like you never have before. Draw closer to God like you never have before so that you can feel the spirit and the move of the Holy Spirit when, when God breathes on you. The Jewish word for the breath of God is ruah. It breathes on us and it restores us and it revives us, but we still have to have enough faith to say, Lord, you alone know. Lord, you alone have the answer. You alone know the answer. Can we live again? So while we're waiting for the answer, what shall we do? Well, if you go back to the text, you will find those answers somewhere in verse 4, 9, and 11. And it may not necessarily be in that order. Uh, because verse 11 tells us we have to acknowledge the situation. It tells us in verse 11 that uh, our bones are dry. <laughs> our hope is lost and we ourselves are cut off. We have to be willing to admit that we've been dry for a long time. Some of us was dry before the pandemic hit. I ain't talking about it. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Some of us was dry before the pandemic came. And I stopped by to let you know that when you have a spiritual dryness, that's when hopelessness will set in. Hopelessness will take away the possibility of life. Hopelessness creates spiritual deadness. And that's why it's so important that we lo never lose hope that we stay in fellowship with God at all times. But when we separate from our faith and do not cultivate a true and deep faith with God, our very actions cause death in our lives. Our choices and our desires that are worldly and out of God's will, out of disobedience. But thank God that we are not lost the scripture said that we are not like those because by grace we have been saved. Ephesians 2, 1 through 6 reminds us that God's mercy has the power to make us alive again through our faith. Yes, we can live again. We shall return from this exile We've been scattered. These are the dry bones of sickness, the dry bones of disease, the dry bones of separation scattered about in the valley. But God has the power to restore. God has the power to reunite. And then not only to reunite, but also to breathe the breath of life into these bones the breath of the Holy Spirit to revive us again so that we can realize that we can live again. 
And then verse four tells us to prophesy, speak the word of God, study to show yourself approved, to live again. We have to let the world know that God is still Lord and ruler over every situation. Uh, we can still proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living so that his spirit will enter into every dry place, every situation, dry situation, every dry hospital room, every dry state house, uh, every dry workplace, uh, every dry grocery store, every dry house, every dry mound, mine, every dry heart, and into the dryness of disease and death the dryness of doubt and fear, so that there will be a shaking and awakening that lives that have been turned upside down in this valley, lives that uh, have been separated from each other, uh, that he will bring them back together again. That we will be bought out of our graves, out of our physically dead situations, out of our mentally dead mindsets, that make us think that we're all that and that we that what we have and who we are is greater than what God can provide. I stop by to let you know that our spiritually dead places of self-focus have to be shifted and returned to a God focus so that God will put his spirit back into the world. He will put his spirit back into us so that we can worship him in spirit and in truth not just going through the motions. Mm. I tell you, if you were going through the motions two years ago, you ought to have some real worship shut up in your bones about now because look where God has brought you from. <laughs> oh, we don't give the appearance of worship. <laughs> worship when it's convenient for us. <laughs> worship when it's done the way we think it should be done. <laughs> worship when it's our Sunday to serve. <laughs> worship when you go in and recognize. <laughs> but he says, will the true worshipers, <laughs> will the true worshipers show up <laughs> and worship me in spirit and in truth? <laughs> I stopped by to ask you today, <laughs> are there any true worshipers in the house today? <laughs> are you willing to do it in the spirit are you willing to allow God to control your worship are you willing to stop setting limits and conditions on your worship are you willing to be authentic in your praise not waiting on the choir to manufacture it not being pumped by the preacher but willing to worship not because of what he's done but in spite of what you're going through are you willing to give god some praise so that the holy spirit can enter into your bones and you will be able to live again i don't have much more to say but I stop by to let you know that verse 9 gives us the conclusion as to whether we can live again. He says we must be renewed by the Holy Spirit. Oh, I stop by to let you know we can throw up holy hands. We can run around the church. But until the Holy Spirit on you oh the physical part is when you receive the word of God it begins the process of reuniting you begin to come together again to worship and acknowledge the word but we've had that for the past two years some of you took advantage of it but many others just separated they weren't coming together in person, so there was no reason to come together virtually. Just separated from the word. So the bones dried out, even as others tried to keep it together. But I stopped by to let you know that it takes the word of God and heard and receive. Do you have ears to hear? and a heart to receive it. You have to be willing to hear the word of God as it is prophesied, as it is spoken in obedience. That's the reason he says obedience is better than sacrifice. 
Hallelujah. When we receive the word of God in obedience, that's when the bones begin to come together, bone to bone. Unity as a people, unity as a nation, unity as a church. When we lay aside what's holding us back and we begin to trust God, we begin to focus on God, not political strife, not personal strife, but on a unity of faith as the people of God. We begin to allow the Spirit of the Lord to breathe on us, the Spirit of the Lord to heal us, the Spirit of the Lord to revive us, so that when God places His Spirit in us again, these bodies, dry bones, shall live. I stop by to let you know on this reunion Sunday, oh, we are reunited. But we still got to find, oh, how do we move from reunion to revival by the renewing of our faith, not just by the hearing of the word, but by allowing the Holy Spirit to breathe the breath of life into us. Because when you receive the Holy Spirit, when you are willing to wait on it, when you're willing to pray about it, when you're willing to meditate on it day in and day out, even in the midnight hour, oh, when you're willing to tarry, we will hear the word of God and our bones will receive the ruah, the breath of God, and it will breathe on us and we will be changed from dryness to life from dismal despair to a joyful noise the clatter and the clanging as that which was separated that which was quarantined that which was removed comes back together with a new life a new spirit a new praise oh what a time what a time we go have when all the bones begin to come together, when all God's children begin to get together, when all the disconnected get back together, what a knocking, what a shouting, when a voice from heaven will come and sound that trumpet and heal our land, reunite us, restore us, replenish us, renew us. Our physical resurrection will be restored, restoring our flesh, restoring our spirit, reviving our mind. And we will know it was the spirit of the Lord. It wasn't the world organization. It wasn't the CDC. It wasn't the president. It wasn't the surgeon general. It wasn't the doctors. It wasn't the nurses. It was the Holy Spirit moving in this place. I want you to know the doctors couldn't kill it. The CDC couldn't solve it. But I got an answer for them. God did it. God did it. Who woke you up this morning? God did it. Who didn't let you sleep too late? God did it. Who hung the sun and caused the moon to shine? God did it. Who healed you when you were sick and suffering? God did it. Who saved you when you were sinking deep in sin? God did it. Who put food on the table? God did it. I stopped by to let you know that God brought us back together again. I feel something moving. I feel the moving in my spirit. I feel God breathing. I feel it breathing. I feel it breathing. Do you feel him breathing the breath of life? 
back into your bones, back into the church, back into the fellowship. I feel the breath moving. I feel the breath flowing. I feel it down in my spirit. I believe he's bringing us back. He's picking us up out of the valley. He's putting our bones back together again. And I believe that God said these bones, yes, those bones, yes, your bones, yes, my bones, yes, our bones, shall, will, have to, can, will, shall, have to, and will shall have to they can and they will live again <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> God bringing the bones together again. So keep prophesying, keep praying, keep speaking life into the dead and dry situations that you encounter. And then you'll begin to hear the, the breath of God begin to begin to breathe. Into our sin. Yeah, it won't happen overnight, but we're moving. The breath is moving. God's breathing on us. God's breathing on your situation. God's breathing in your home. God's breathing in those dry places that you've been going through for so long. And He said, just prophesy. To speak the word in season and out of season. And I will, <laughs> I will make sure you live again. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, He did it. Oh, everything that happened to me. That was good, God did it. Yes, He did it. Oh, He picked me up, uh, turned me all around. Uh, he placed my feet on solid ground. I said, Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he, come on, y'all, clap your hands. Oh, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. I said everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. Oh, I was sick, but I could be the well. He healed me. Now I can tell. I said everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. Oh, God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. Who hung the moon in the sky with sky? God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. Who healed my body? God did it. He'll heal this from COVID. God did it. I went to the doctor. He couldn't heal me. I went to the lawyer. And he couldn't fix it. Holy Jesus. God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. God did it. 
Oh, yes, he did it. God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. I said everything that happened to me that was good. I did it. Oh, yes, he did it. Oh, Hallelujah. At this time, I want to extend an offer to those who may be out of the fellowship. Maybe you've been in a dry season and you've been saying, I, God, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Everywhere I turn, I'm confronted by something that is not the way it used to be. And what I want to challenge you today is that even though it may not be the way it used to be, even though we may not ever go back to the way it was, that God that was there back then is here right now. And he promised us in scripture that he is doing a new thing. So let us claim the victory right now in God. That yes, we will. And yes, we can live again. Yeah, we may have to adjust, but we shall live again. If there's someone under the sound of my voice who does not have a relationship with God, whether you're in our virtual space, you can text your information to 404-548-8169. If you're in the physical space, you're welcome to come and say, Lord, surrender. I'm ready to live again. I'm ready for you to breathe into my life the breath of the Holy Spirit. Will you come? I know he'll do it. God did it. Yes, he did it. Oh, God did it. I know God did it. I know God did it. God did it. Who healed your body? We know it was God. Who woke you up? Who did it? And I'm so thankful that God did it. And I guarantee you, just like he did it for you, just like he did it for me, there's somebody else he's willing to do it for. But you have to be willing to receive him. You have to be willing to open your heart so that he can begin to bring the blood. I know that he did it. Thank you for doing it. God. Oh, yes, he did it. Who he healed your body? He rolled your mind. He woke you up this morning. I know God did it. I went to a doctor. And he couldn't heal me. I went to the lawyer. And they couldn't fix it. All in Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. On this day, Mount Zion, we receive into the fellowship. Because you know, I'm about fellowship. You know, membership, I always tell you, if you want a membership card, go to Sam. They, you can get one. <laughs> A whole lot cheaper than you can get a fellowship with God. Because this one costs you something. You have to be willing to submit to him. Yeah. It's priceless. And so today we welcome into fellowship this family. I've been praying for them. Hallelujah. And I've been praying for God to move in their spirit. They've been coming. And on this first Sunday back, God is already blessing God is already doing. So we welcome to the fellowship today, Sister Brittany Price. And, amen. And, amen. And her two daughters, Mackenzie and Madison. Amen. We're so glad to have them. And we will begin our new members class with them. And we have a couple of others that 
have joined in the time period and we need to bring them in to the new members class and we just said go to work amen amen that's what your faith requires that you just do the work that he's called and we praise god for each and every one of you ask our stewards uh, to make sure you get their information amen officially uh, before they leave so that we can have all of their contact information added to the church information I mean I know where to find them amen but we need to do it officially so I ask that our stewards do that information gathering uh, at the conclusion of service we are preparing now to go into communion. Is there anyone that has not received a bag with the communion in it? If you would just raise your hand. Amen. We have a couple over here that need communion. And then we have back in the sound, in the our AB Tech needs communion. what I love to see now. All these young people went downstairs separately. And now they come back and they all Amen. See, won't God do it? Amen. God will bring us together again. Holy Communion, we will do the general confession that will come up on the screen. And then we will do the prayer of consecration and then receive our elements. Let us recite our general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. You honestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption? Who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel the command to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. 
Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, and remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and broke it. And when he had gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat this, my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of it for this is my blood of the new Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was given for you to preserve your soul and body into everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. You may eat. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you to preserve your soul and body into everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. You may drink. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, how will be thy name? Amen. And after that, they arose. Began to fellowship. Praise God for each one of you who came out on Reunion Sunday. Go back, tell somebody else, invite them to come. We will be here on next Sunday at 11 o'clock and the Sunday after and the Sunday after. 
And so we invite you to just come and share. Let them know that you came, you felt good, you, you felt safe, and the spirit was moving in this place because we shall live again. Let us pray. Let us stand. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity together. We thank you for the blessings you have showered down upon us. And now as we prepare to leave this place, God, but not your presence, we ask you to go with each one into their homes, into their jobs, into the streets and the byways. Cover them with your breath, with your Holy Spirit. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everybody say bless, bless, bless. Oh, say bless, bless. Say bless, bless, bless. We're blessed, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go. I'm 